Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Changing Times. It is Wednesday, April the 17th. This is show, unbelievably, 156. We have completed three years. So Congratulations. Next, well, thank you. I tell you what, what a blessing. I tell you what, we didn't uh, know how long this show would last. And thank you to the audience. It continues to grow. And thank you to our guests and our co-hosts because... Uh, it's just a miracle having all these difference makers on our show. Everybody that you see on our show is a difference maker. We have a guest today that uh, is we're going to introduce in just very soon, and she's a difference maker, a very young difference maker that's going to make a big difference in everyone's lives uh, as she continues to, to live her life. We are live at the Axe Media Group headquarters in Springfield, Missouri, and I am Lynn Morris, and we have co-host uh, Dr. Mary Byrne. Dr. Mary Byrne. Good and, morning, everyone. And then we have Teresa Drusa mm -hmm. uh, with the American Legion. Yes. And then we also have, being Zoomed in today, we have our star that's uh, uh, our guest today, and, and she's Aaliyah Youngblood. And, and uh, Leah, good morning. Hey, appreciate good you. Uh, Zoom, Zoom. Good morning. Uh, glad that you're zooming in today. And you're down in Branson, Missouri today, right? You're probably I getting ready to start, and start probably getting ready to start school. Are, are you getting late to school today because of this show? Yep, I'm missing my worldview class. Oh, okay, but I, I know you're so smart. That's not going to be a problem that you're missing a class. So, so, uh, uh, so we we really appreciate it. So, what we're going to do today, and and I, I know the the American Legion. We were just talking about this. The American Legion is in all fifty states. Okay, it's a great organization. It supports veterans, and we've got someone here, uh, Teresa, that is a member and has had been a member and. And she's been involved in this oratory contest that you're involved in. And we're going to kind of let her kind of set the stage and, and things like that. But um, one of the things, Leah, that I, I uh, would, if you can, is to maybe either read or, or do one or two of the uh, uh, speeches that you did that actually helped you be a winner. Because now you're a district winner and you're going to be able to go to the state contest and then... What else? Um, yeah. I'm not sure what level she's at right now. Okay. Um, Aaliyah, what's your next competition? So in the I have actually uh, finished all of the competitions that I'll be doing this year. I won okay. fourth place in state. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Well, I didn't know that, but uh, congratulations. That That's in your first year, right? And what year are you in class, high school? I'm a senior this year. You're a senior, but you could still do that next year, right? Or can uh, is it only through high school? It's only through high school. Okay. But they can start out as a freshman. Mm -hmm. They can compete their freshman year, and they can win money mm -hmm. their freshman year, and then their senior year they can compete again. They mm -hmm. can compete up to senior their senior year. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, win money each year, mm -hmm. and then, like I said, if they win at the national level they can win $24,000 in scholarship money. Wow. So that's, that's a top prize is 24,000. Yes. That's a lot of money that will help mm -hmm. pay for a year or two of college. <clears throat> that's right. So very, very good. So, mm -hmm. so Le Leah, so what are you going to do after you get out of high school? What's your plans? So right now, my plans are to attend Southwest Baptist University. That's a Christian affiliated university in Bolivar, Missouri. Um, while there, I'm planning on double majoring in English and communications. And I'm still open to what career path I'm wanting to go down after college. Right now, I'm thinking maybe public relations or technical writer or a whole host of things. But there's really a lot of options out there. Well, I tell you what, that's great, Elias. So uh, I'm going to put a plug in for Southwest Baptist too. I have one of my degrees 
my master's degree in healthcare administration came from Southwest Baptist too. So, so I'm very familiar with your school that you're going to be going to, and it's a great school, uh, great professors, uh, absolutely a good choice. But so, right, uh, right now you're at College of the Ozarks. Is that true? In their so high school. Right now, I actually. Oh, right now I actually just changed out of my school uniform. I'm at a school of the Ozarks, which is located on the College of the Ozarks campus. And that okay. it just opened about 10 years ago as a K through 12 school, which means it's a lab school that follows the same values as College of the Ozarks. It is a private school, Christian affiliated. Like I said, we have to wear uniforms. Um, that has been a very, very good experience for me. It's one of those things that a lot of schools, a lot of friends that I have outside of Esavo, they don't quite know what it means to be patriotic, or they don't quite know what it means to have Christian values integrated in their entire lives. And I would say School of the Ozarks does this very, very well. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what, Leah, so kudos <laughs> to your parents. I know they're gonna be watching this show later on. They're both at work. But uh, uh, just a lot of credit to your parents. Who else would you credit your life so far? You know, I, I appreciate the fact that you're patriotic, that you understand the value of being patriotic and, and, and what our country really stands for. And we have a lot of young people today that just kind of sit on the fence or maybe on the wrong side of the fence and, and they just don't get all the sacrifices that people have made for them to continue to live whatever life they want to live. So, so how, how did, who, who influenced you? How, how did you get to be what you are today? That's a very good question. For people who have influenced me, I could give a whole list, basically all the teachers at SFO. It, the curriculum that they've given us, it's not, I wouldn't say it's just giving us the facts, just not just giving us beliefs to believe in and not giving the entire story. No, we look through old documents. We look through actual beliefs of people and we figure out, OK, what do we want to believe in? What do we believe is an informed decision on politics, Christianity, etc.? To point out a few people that have influenced my life. One would be my uh, seventh and eighth grade teacher, Mrs. Jenny Carey. She is the curriculum director for the K through uh, eight, as well as a literature composition teacher. She has helped me with through so many different things. And she was the first one who actually talked about these types of competitions. I've done competitions through uh, the Daughters of the American Revolution. I've done contests through uh, VFW or Veterans of the Foreign Wars Association. Just things like that. She's the one that gave me that idea in the first place that, oh, Aaliyah, you could do these things. You could try out. There's no reason not to. And mm -hmm. I did, and I've done fairly well in them. And it's all thanks yeah. to her, 100%. Well, mm -hmm. that's, that's absolutely great. And, and you know, talking about, I heard you say uniforms. My wife and I have always thought, I was on the school board in Ozark, Missouri, when our three kids were in school. And, and, I, and I've watched the changes of dress and, and everything like that. And I always thought, to my, and there's so much peer pressure about wearing the right kind of clothes and stuff like that. When I went to school, I don't think we had those issues. But, but uh, uh, I, I always thought uniforms would be a, and so you didn't mind wearing a uniform, did you? Not really, no. And so, so, you know, it just you don't, kind of, you don't have a lot of decisions to make on what to wear. I right, think it makes right. life easier. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I think that's okay. And you are very blessed because that you were able to go to this private school cause the Ozarks is a tremendous university. Uh, and I have a lot of friends that have graduated from college of the Ozarks and everyone that I know that graduated from there has been very successful in life. So you're exactly right whether it be K-1 through K-12, or whether it be on to their four-year program, I'm telling you, that that's, you've, you've got a great foundation. 
So you've got nothing but up ahead, very positive things go on, going on for you. So how, let's talk about, did you have more than one essay or talk that you gave, or, or is there two of them, or what, how, did, how did that work? So for the American Legion contest, it consists of four total speeches. Well, I guess technically five, five total speeches. Now for each competition, I would only give two of those, but the way it breaks down is you have one five to six for the preliminary levels, and then it turns into an eight to 10 minute speech. You have one of those, and that is your main speech. It's something that you have been very passionate about. You can pick your topic as long as it associates with the Constitution. Now, your four other speeches that you give, those have to do with amendments. Those are assigned. So we were given four amendments at the beginning of the year, and you write a smaller three to five minute speech on each of those. And the way the competition works is you will first give your main speech, and then they will draw out of the four assigned topics, is what we call them, and you will perform whichever one they draw. Wow. Okay. So, so, um, how many, how many people were in this contest? There are a, a large amount, I would say statewide for the district that I participated in for my district level, I competed against two other people. Uh, for the next level, I competed against one. And then at the state level, they had narrowed it down to just the four top contestants. And okay. I forgot to mention, but all of these speeches are memorized. So okay. by the end, I had 30 minutes worth of speeches memorized. Well, that's pretty good. We, we've got uh, <laughs> people today that uh, can't memorize uh, uh, just three or four words. So I don't want to get too <laughs> political here, but I mean, we, we have a pr problem uh, sometimes with, with people not being able to remember what they're supposed to say. So, so you want to you want to go ahead and and uh, uh, recite uh, your, your uh, winning speech. Sure. Can you so do that or I read? It? Give, yeah, I I'll, I might read it today. I have started memorizing my senior thesis, which is twenty minutes long. Um, so that kind of replaced my other memorization. But I have it right here that I can read for you guys. Sure. So sure. the title of my speech is Resilvering the Constitution, Our Responsibility and Our Heirloom. After my granny's funeral, I picked through her basement, reliving old memories with detached sorrow. As I searched, I found a cardboard box. Within it lay a scratched but beautiful mirror. I began to cry. Of course, my granny would keep this. No, that's worth enough to be fixed, she would have said. Worth enough to be resilvered. This image much resembles our government. Like my granny's mirror, America's constitutional republic also has her flaws. But she too is not worthless. Our government's frame, the Constitution, establishes and protects the reflection of her people while continually restoring and resilvering that image. Our founding fathers outlined a brilliant system of checks and balances, allowing all states and individuals a voice. However, many today do not use nor even understand this worth. For example, on July 4th, 2022, the Pew Research Center found that 84% of American respondents believed that, quote, the U.S. political system needs major changes or a complete reformation. As these Americans claimed our system doesn't work, Pew Research also found that only 37% of these eligible voters even voted in three elections from 2018 to 2022. Abraham Lincoln addressed this voter hypocrisy well. He said, elections belong to the people. 
it's their decision. If they decide to turn their back on the fire and burn their behinds, then they will just have to sit on their blisters. While Lincoln offered a rather hilarious analogy, this hypocritical refusal of responsibility will ultimately shatter our nation. Now, some may claim that the white, property-owning men only said they created a people's constitution. In reality, early Americans of another gender or race could not vote, and that, they claim, cannot have value. This line of thought forgets an inherent attribute of our Constitution, improvement. In the preamble to the Constitution, our founders didn't say in order to form a perfect union. No, they said more perfect. No person, no idea, no government can be faultless, and our founders knew it. Thomas Paine, in Common Sense, even wrote, Government, even in its best state, is but a necessary evil. What distinguishes good government from bad is its ability to be refurbished. In Article 5 of the Constitution, our founders built a process for amending our government. An excerpt of this article reads, Whenever two-thirds of both houses propose amendments to this Constitution, or on the application of the legislatures of two-thirds of the states, in either case, those amendments shall be valid as part of this Constitution. When ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states, or by convention of three-fourths thereof. Over the years, we have used this process to re-silver our reflection. In 1865, African-American men joined the ranks of citizenship. In 1920, women like me won their suffrage. And in 1971, citizens aged 18 and up gained their right to vote. Through these amendments, our forefathers and mothers refurbished our government into a more perfect union. But, again, this only happens when citizens accept their part in our government. This is the most beautiful, yet terrifying attribute of our Constitution. Her success relies on us, and her failures, they accuse us. Friends, all of this says that we must be active in our government for our nation to survive and thrive. A government built on the people depends on the people. Research done by Oxford academic scholar S. Mark Prancer in his book, The Psychology of Citizenship and Civic Engagement, supports this. He found that states and countries with high levels of civic participation experience better health, mental health, and lower rates of disease, suicide, and crime. Research evidence indicates they are also more prosperous economically, have healthier and better educated children, and, of course, are better governed. Our Constitution and her freedoms depend on us. Like my granny and her mirror, let us defend and leave an improved Constitution as an heirloom, reflecting liberty and individualism for our children and our grandchildren and for all of those that come after them. Thank you. Wow. I'm going to clap. Excellent. Yes. That's great. That's, that's absolutely great. So uh, 
uh, a lot of wisdom in, in those words. Uh, how long did you work on, I mean, you did some research, okay? And I, 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 I can tell you research, you did a lot of re reading. I love um, the Lincoln quote. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, and I just like the way you started out uh, talking about your grandmother, your granny. Uh, the fact that you want to re-silver our Constitution. We have people today, uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, of different ages, that, that uh, want to destroy our Constitution, tear it up, do away with it, do a new Constitution. And we, there's no need in that. Uh, actually, just like what you said, to re-silver our Constitution. That's what we need. You know, um, I, I went to a, a meeting um, two days ago, and, and um, now so are our city. We, I, I'm a commissioner. Uh, you know, there's 114 counties in this in our state and, and every county has commissioners and and there's three of us that run the county commission. And you're the and presiding. I'm the presiding commissioner in Christian County. Uh, that's the neighbor to, to down to Branson, to Taney and Stone County. And so we were at Stone County uh, at Silver Dollar City. We had a lunch meeting with eight different counties, Southwest Missouri District. And, and um, I was sitting next to Josh Hawley, Senator Hawley's um, lady that uh, Aaron, that um, does all his work with constituency work uh, in in this area. And I just got to thinking about listening to you talking about the Constitution. He, he's one of the best constitutional attorneys and, and now doing a great job in, in Congress as a U.S. Senator. I'm going to hook you up with uh, Senator Josh Hawley. I, I think I can do that. I want him to hear what you just said. Mm -hmm. I want him to hear what you just said. Um, I think he'll be very impressed um, to, to hear what you said at your age. Um, I, I just think, that, and, and I actually, I, I think we're not biased, but, but us three judges, I, I think she's, I would give her first place. I would too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have no clue <laughs> so, <laughs> what the criteria were. But well, I, I don't know the how. The content, I, I, the analogy. I, yeah, you know. I mean, that was so awesome that I can't even imagine Anything could be a degree better, but, but, uh, <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing is that, um, when you're at that level of competition, if everybody's wonderful, the ranking is meaningless, right, you know, right. and, and I can't imagine right. that you were not the equivalent of first place, but right. they had to do a ranking system because that's the way the system works. And, and, uh, you ended up in the place you had, but, uh, that's that's the thing about gifted programs is everybody's gifted and then you try to rank within this small. Yeah. Small well, and Leah, area. I tell you what, too, you know, uh, just knowing you just today and uh, uh, knowing how smart, and how driven you are and, and your mind and your heart is in the right place. Uh, you know, when I was a senior in high school just a few years ago, I, I won second in state in tennis with the largest school classification. And we had a lot of great tennis players uh, that was competing in the state tournament. And, um, but I, I took second. And then that summer, because I traveled six or eight states and played tennis all the time, uh, I uh, beat the opponent, my opponent that beat me in the state finals that became first place champion. Uh, I beat him twice that summer. Yeah. So, so, uh, better timing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, that's what I see in you is that, uh, uh, that might have been fourth place, but to me, that's first place, and, and you'll continue to uh, excel in whatever you do. And I would just say, listening to what you think you want to do, and you're going to be, you may change your mind once or twice, and, and that's fine. Whatever you settle into, you're going to be excellent at it. But uh, you are so smart, and you understand what the issues are in our country, that you need to be somebody like Dr. Mary Burns. She's an activist, uh, got a PhD in education, and she specializes in educational issues. Particularly and, legislators, and right? And legislators, <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, we can't depend on them. I was a state rep for eight years, too. And you cannot depend on them knowing everything, everything. and doing the right thing, okay? Sometimes they vote for the wrong things, and, and uh, even higher ed, uh, uh, Desi, and all the people that we – get our charges from. They tell us what to do on our state level. That's why going to a private school and a Christian school 
that's the two pluses for you because even though public education is so important and, and our local public education, but we have flaws in that too, don't we? Well, yes. And, and it's because of basically I, the enemy within has learned how to manipulate that system. It, the public schools has shifted away from their mission of preserving the Republic mm -hmm. to try to make global citizens out of everyone yeah. and see um, this, the, education setting you're in understands that that was a shift in the wrong direction. They have to preserve the original intent of educating our citizens for citizenship. And that doesn't mean global citizenship. It means, it means how to preserve this constitutional republic because it is the freest government and the most prosperous for its people. Um, so you are part of the remnant, <laughs> and uh, I, I fully expect God's going to use that remnant to to multiply like love and bread. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Teresa, tell us more about the history of the American Legion that um, sponsored this contest. Well, it was founded in 1919 after World War One. There were veterans, mm -hmm. and they were, you know, in a bad way you know, a lot of disabilities, and um, they had a lot of need for themselves and their families, you know, medical care and everything else. So the... Um, kind the, of a self-support group. Yes, yes. And um, the uh, American Legion, I belong to American Legion 125, and they sponsored Aaliyah. So and, it's a chapter within the American Legion. 125 is a chapter. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And um, the oratorical contest, it was developed, it was to develop an, an appreciation for the Constitution among high school students, which, you know, um, some schools uh, in Springfield would not even participate. It didn't even, you know, want to let their students know or give them a chance to participate, which was really sad. So um, when the brochures came out, I um, decided to take them down to the school because my grandson goes to College of the Ozarks and I drive right by the school and I thought, I'll just drop off some brochures. And um, then when we had our zone competition, Aaliyah showed up mm -hmm. and, and she did a great job. So the American Legion, um, if you go to their website, it's AmericanLegion.org, it lists all their programs. There's baseball, there's boys state. I believe there's a girl state, the oratorical contest. And it it just lists, you know, they they have a lot of programs. And if somebody, uh, if Aaliyah wants to let somebody at the school know about the oratorical contest, they can compete as a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, but they can go on the website and actually view um, orations from uh, previous contestants. So they get a sample of what yes. winning looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a there's just a plethora. It's a really good website. There's a lot of information on there. Mm -hmm. And um, more about the Amer American Legion 125, um, they have um, a store. Um, it's at 3335. Uh, West Sunshine, and it's co-located with Mike's Unique Antiques. And I'm just going to break away from the American mm -hmm. Legion for an, a minute because Mike Cook owns Mike's Unique Antiques, and he is a veteran, mm -hmm. and he keeps us afloat. The man has a, a big heart for veterans, and he puts his heart and soul into making things happen you know, when, when we need help. So it's still self-help. Yes, 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 it is. But um, American Legion 125, they have a store and they take donations. If you're moving and you have too much furniture, they will come and pick up your furniture and they'll paint it or fix it or whatever. And they put it in, uh, it's now called the resale store, the veterans resale store. And you can go in and buy furniture, and they have some beautiful things in there. Mm -hmm. I, I have a hard time getting out of there without <laughs> buying something. Um, and then they also, in that same building, in the back, they have an event center, and you can rent it out 
and um, you can have weddings, graduation parties. Um, we have people in there doing karaoke. People come and have meetings, and um, that's how they raise money. And then they help veterans, uh, especially the elderly veterans, uh, build ramps. Mm -hmm. um, there was one lady, she was in a home, and they wouldn't let her come back to her house until we built a ramp for her. And, you know, it's the, the veterans that build the ramps, they're, they're old themselves, and a lot of them have disabilities. So it's really huge for them to go in and do that. And then I also um, belong to an organization that's called Ozarks Veterans Coalition. And it used to be the uh, Vietnam Veterans Chapter 952. And they work with the American Legion uh, Post 125 to build the ramps. We, we work together to do that. And they also offer scholarships for veterans and sometimes uh, children of veterans. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, if they need food or items, you know, if they're moving, if they're homeless and moving into a home, they'll provide items, household items for them. There's, there's just so much that they do. So mm -hmm. if you don't have a, a home like, um, if you don't belong to a veteran organization and you want to, you can just go to, uh, yeah, um, the veteran store at 3335 West Sunshine. Just go in and they have applications there at the front desk and you can fill one out and um, the, then you can just, you know, that's how you start to, to get involved. Or if you want to donate, if you, you know, just, just give them a call. You know what, Teresa, I'm going to throw in a plug too for Mike, cause I met him. Um, I didn't know all that about him, but I knew he was a veteran and, uh, my wife recently, she and I have just downsized from a large home to a smaller condo senior villa. And, uh, we can't, we weren't able to take our dining room. We have a beautiful dining room, uh, uh, set. And, and and the hutch is just absolutely beautiful. It's lit and mirrored in the back and very ornate. I've seen it. Very heavy. <laughs> you seen my house? No, no. Oh, the hutch oh, <laughs> at the store. But, oh no, I don't. Ha I don't, don't have. I, I don't it. have it there. Oh, well, but, there's but, two hutches. Yeah, in there's some there. really pretty ones. But I bought a hutch there. Oh. I bought an old antique hutch, and then uh, and we had it painted by another veteran in Rogersville. He and his son. And we had it painted black and brown, stained brown. And so it was just absolutely was the right size for our new place because it's mm -hmm. smaller. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of reminded me of what I had, but mine was huge. I mean, even our dining room table seated 12 people. So that's a large room, a large table, large furniture around there. But, uh, and I bought that for hundreds, just a few hundred dollars compared to, to what something like that would cost. Well, let me um, tell you what I'm hearing here. It's Americans helping Americans. Yeah. It's not a government no. agency. <clears throat> and that's something General Flynn brought up in uh, his movie, <clears throat> is that when a very corrupt intelligence community in Washington, D.C. was trying to uh, smear him and uh, basically paralyze him so he couldn't be effective, it was the American people who funded Flynn's legal defense. Mm -hmm. they, they opened up a, a legal defense fund and it was just everyday people who recognized what a corrupt system was doing to a good man mm -hmm. that, that supported him and wrote letters. He said he has bins and bins of letters from people encouraging him, telling similar stories about what happened to them. And he said, you know, it's, it's not the system. The system was trying to eliminate him. It was the American people. And, and that's the, the reason our constitution is so important is because it gives the freedom for people to help people. We're not subjects. We're not subjects of a crown. We are a free people, but that comes with that comes responsibility to 
to um, take care of each other. And uh, that's what I really appreciate about your speech is this reverence for that constitution, this country, the people's freedom, and the acceptance that that means responsibility. Um, because handing over, <laughs> handing over your security to a tyrannical system just guarantees your elimination. It's, it's got to come from within. Mm -hmm. So I just want to throw out to you that, that the, um, that narrative about white men and property ownership, um, being the group that wrote our constitution, that all came from a historian at Columbia university. His name was Charles Beard and, uh, Beard's objective in writing that. And by the way, his book on the, um, the economic interpretation of the constitution was discredited by other real historians, but it got resurrected in the 1960s when the radicals took over and, and again, wanted to uh, level this society. Beard at the end of his life, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, recognized he did something wrong, but the, the Pandora's box was already opened. And, and quite frankly, I hate the stories because there's at least four major uh, figures in history where, they, and Woodrow Wilson is one of them, where after they do this damage to our constitution and our country, because it was Woodrow Wilson who said, this is a, a living, breathing document. And basically what that meant was we can pass statute to make it say anything we want rather than go through the amendment process where everybody has to agree, which was the design of the founders to slow this down and stop it through a very uh, elongated process if it was bad for the people. So what the progressives did was say, you know what, we're just going to build a, a, a side government an administrative state and work around our constitution. And that's where we are today. We have to recognize that that was the strategy. We can dismantle that, that side system, but we have to get back to the constitution. So I appreciate you, Aaliyah. Hey, Aaliyah, we're gonna run out of time, but I'm gonna have to talk about sponsors, but I wanna let you know that uh, you are famous because, and you're gonna be more famous as, as you go through life because General Flynn, we had him on for 45 minutes about three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and, and he's pretty famous and he, his family was persecuted. Yeah. Uh, and, and so he's telling his story. People need to go out and watch that Flynn movie because it will set uh, the real truth uh, to what, what went on and what's going on in, in our country. Um, also, uh, just real quick, Leah, you might want to study the Missouri, and you probably have, Missouri Constitution. You know, we only have over six million, a little bit over six million people. And uh, we have one of the longest constitutions of any state. Uh, we've had a lot of stuff added on um, uh, throughout the years that are just not good stuff for the Constitution. Uh, and uh, even like bingo. Bingo is, is part of the Constitution, the Missouri Constitution. So a lot of people don't know that. So we have a lot of frivolous, not important stuff. And that's how you dilute the Constitution power and the importance Petition of initiative. Yeah. That was our problem. And, and that's what yeah. we're trying to do now. This year, we're going to hope and pray that the legislators do the right thing and make it harder. You, you, you got to allow people to to have a chance to change the Constitution, but you can't make it so easy that they put everything on there that is not good. So anyway, we want to say that we got sponsors. We're going to talk about sponsors real quick. Brad Pisto is a certified fiduciary financial planner located right in Ozark, Missouri. He is probably one of the best retirement specialists in the country, not just in Missouri. He has written a couple books, Safe Money Matters, Bulletproof. They're both number one best-selling books on Amazon. If you want to uh, study retirement planning, it's never too early to start thinking about retirement planning. Look at what it costs today. Look at what inflation's doing. Look at uh, uh, at uh, the different people. Watch your different ages, Aaliyah. You're very young, but watch all these other different age groups. I mean, I tell you what, if they're not planning on retirement today, 
uh, they're going to be in sad, sad shape. I don't know if we're going to be able to depend you, whether you're going to be able to depend on social security mm-hmm. and some of the things that, that they're forcing people to pay into today. So he's a very important person. You can call 417-581-9222, 417-581-9222. And Lisa will answer the phone and she'll take care of you and tell you uh, it doesn't cost anything to talk to Brad Pisto. And, and he has friends in all 50 states, licensed in several, but he can help you get uh, hooked up with the best ways to uh, retire and ha- have money for as long as you live. The next uh, sponsor is uh, John Whittaker, uh, his former partner, John Youngblood, uh, Youngblood Motors. Now it's called Springfield Nissan, Springfield Kia. Any the, relation, Aaliyah? Yeah, are, <laughs> any relation to John Youngblood? <laughs> You have to ask your parents. I mean, they, they, you may be related s- somehow distantly. John Youngblood's a tremendous guy. John Whitaker, a tremendous. They are so generous in, in things that they do to help other people, other organizations and things like that. They never say no when somebody requests something of need. And uh, they sell N- Nissans and Kias, John does now, on South Campbell, 35 35 South Campbell, across the street, they sell used cars. Most of them are certified. If you had the money and you're going to buy a used car because that will save you money compared to a new car, a certified car is the way to go because in this dealership, they have 110 checkpoints. They're making sure that everything on that car is just like new. And that way, when you drive down the road after you've paid a lot of money, you're going to find out that that car is going to drive for a long time without having something go wrong, and that's going to save you money. So we highly recommend both of these sponsors, and and when you call them or you go see them, let them know that uh, you heard that on Changing Times. I want to make another comment, too, that uh, uh, Flynn movie is is out in at the – Oh, probably in this next week. Oh, uh, you can get it on Amazon now. Yeah, you can get it on Amazon now, but it's going to be at theaters too. Well, uh, it's it's at selected theaters. Selected okay, theaters. Okay, so you have to go to flynnmovie.com. Okay. Don't don't forget to add the word movie after his name because the flynn.com is a cooking website. Okay. It has to be <laughs> <Yeah>. flynnmovie.com. <laughs> okay. And you will get the list of venues where he's uh, premiering his movie and he'll appear in person. And uh, you can also uh, buy the DVD direct from the website where um, there are uh, locations where that DVD is available. Uh, but I was there at the, um, the premiere in Branson last week, and they had the the DVDs available for purchase as well if you show up in person. So I'd so. highly recommend people all over the country, if you want to know the truth, absolutely. Then, then that's what you need to watch. Watch that. One other thing, Jan and I got to go to a preview show for uh, uh, Unsung Hero, for Unsung Hero. It's uh, for King and Country, a very uh, popular Christian uh, band. And they're from Australia, and they moved over here. It's a story about faith and family. The two most important things I can think of, faith and family. And it was an awesome, awesome. Actually showed all the trials and and things they had to go through as a young family and to look at them today and how successful they are. Uh, That's going to be available to be seen around April the 26th. And that is the... Uh, Lionsgate, Lionsgate uh, Productions. They've done several. Uh, yes, that, that, that reminds me. This is the last week for the uh, Bible tour at College of the Ozarks. Have you seen that, Aaliyah? I have. It's very, very cool. Uh, yeah, I think it ends the twentieth, and uh, so by the end of the week, I'm going to be down there. But uh, the, do that's that another too. special yeah. uh, uh, tour of a of a I, what would you call it? It's it's almost like a little museum, right? You might be referring to the Ralph Foster Museum on the Cebo campus. Uh, I I'm, I might be confusing it with what I saw with the Green family when they brought in the Bible Museum. I think it's but, in the Cater Center. Okay, so, so tell yeah. us about the Bible yeah. event. So it's the Inspired exhibit. It was brought by a, a family who gave us a Torah. Um, 
what that Torah, it was made in Germany. And the things about Torah is the first five books of the Bible, it's written in Hebrew. It is perfect. There can be no mistakes, no typos, no bad handwriting. It is perfect. It is made on animal skin. And anyways, lots of cool things. That particular Torah survived the Holocaust. Um, mm -hmm. It went through it, actually. So yeah. it is very cool. And this is Holocaust, it. I believe. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're okay. So the Bible Museum, it basic at the Keter Center, it walks through the proof we have for the Bible so that you can go about being educated and knowing that, okay, what I believe in is historically accurate and it's just true. Awesome. Well, oh, thanks so much. Hey, Aaliyah, thanks for being on today. We have run out of time. Thanks everybody for watching this show. Be sure and tell your family and friends. We'll be back next Wednesday, same time, 9 a.m. Have a great rest of the week. One, two, three.